Alright, about another minute here. Forty-five. Should we call this meeting to order? <clears throat> okay, roll call. Chair Reese Adams. Present. David Carroll. Present. Martin Gilmore. Here. Mark Hessling. Here. Julie Parker. Present. We have alternate member Kyle Conrad. Here. Leah Beth has not joined yet. Council member Wink will be joining later in the meeting. Um, we have Inglewood Public Schools liaison, a new, new liaison, Emily Ancona. Did I say that right, Emily? Yeah, that's right. All right, thanks. Excused, we have Clarice Ambler. Tim Baca with Museum of Outdoor Art. Staff, we have Director Christina Underhill, Library and Cultural Arts Manager Mark Molis, and Inglewood Events Supervisor Tony Arnold. Did I get everyone? Thank you. Right, thank you. All right. Hi. Last um, week's uh, minutes. Um, Reese, yeah. do we want Christina to introduce Emily? Oh yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to pass it to Emily to introduce herself, but we're really excited to have you as the school liaison for the Cultural Arts Commission. So welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Um, so I work at Inglewood High School, and this is my seventh year teaching there. Um, and uh, I don't know what else you guys want to know, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank you for volunteering. Really appreciate it. I don't think we've ever had a school liaison before, so this will be um, a good addition, especially since um, some of, especially since well, a lot of our recent projects have involved students, and some of our upcoming ideas um, do too. So it'll be great to have a liaison in that respect. Thanks, Emily. All right, now on to minutes from last week, of which there are many. Um, uh, yep, it's up on the screen if I could get um, an approval of those minutes. Move to approve the minutes. Thank you, can I get a second? Second. Thanks, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Well, for the first time in several months, I don't think we have any public comment. So we are going to. Uh, am I right that we don't have any new business? Correct. All right. Well, we will move on to the old business then. Oh, this is going to be a quick meeting here. Um, okay, so the first thing on the agenda is the contribution. Um, Angela Forrester came and spoke last week about two projects that she's working on in the community, the tiny gallery concept and then the steamroller art. And so in that meeting, um, she had asked for, um, in total, a $3,000 donation. She has received some donations um, recently. So she's received about $500 per project from one source and about 350 towards the steamroller um, for another. So in total, that leaves us with a 1650 ask. Um, I wanted, David, do you want to pull up the budget real quick so we can just look and see what we've allocated for yeah. uh, community requests? Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So 
Oh man, what is going on with my screen here? Okay. So we have, let's see here. So it looks like we have, if I may. Yep. Um, it looks like we've got $10,000 in event support. Mm -hmm. And if we would consider this an event, um, it, I believe that that, that has not, there hasn't been any um, earmarks on that 10,000. And it was, I believe intended at the beginning at the time for things like this, uh, people that had projects that were arts related that wanted to help with some help with funding. Yeah, so certainly the steamroller will be an event. We talked about doing that in combination with um, touch a truck um, or some other type of event that um, Tony's working on. So I think that would be an easy, we could slot that easily. I mean, my vote would be to include the tiny galleries in this bucket too. Um, we're talking only in total 1650 and we haven't touched it yet. And we're, you know, almost halfway through the year. So I think, I think um, that that would be a, a fair allocation unless others have anything else to add. That's 1650 total or for, or total. Each, for each project. Okay. Total. I have that the entire project was um, 3000. I, I, I sent um, Angela an email just to confirm that those are the most up-to-date numbers. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, I was just this afternoon, so I haven't heard from her yet. But <clears throat> um, so I wanted to make sure that nothing had changed. But yeah. Well, <laughs> um, discussion, point of discussion. It, is this um, just to verify, um, maybe from uh, Christina or Mark, is this appropriate use of these funds to support projects like this? I mean, I just second guess, I guess now that was our intent, but I don't know if there's any, any uh, feedback on that as well. Yeah, I think you can use it for that. I know the steamroller event, if, if this is referring to having the city of Inglewood event as part of the steamroller event, I think that's an appropriate way to fund it, um, to add to an event. And Tony, during staff's choice, will give an update on the events, which the steamroller event is planned for in August. And so, yeah, I think that would definitely qualify as far as the... Um, the other piece that she's asking for, I think it's community based. So yeah, it's art. I would I would agree that we could fund that as well if it's something you're all interested in. So may I one more question? Yeah. Um, so this would be new for us, uh, I think, as a commission to support these kind of items. Does anybody have any reservation? I know Angela as well, and I know many of you do well, but uh, do we, I guess in part, the, the request would be to reimburse expenses that have already been uh, expensed, right? And that we wouldn't be giving this money to somebody that wouldn't be completing a project. I mean, to give them the money and then not see the project be done. It would really be just reimbursing. It'd be a, a agreement to say that we would support this for the 1650 and they would have to submit uh, receipts for reimbursement. That was my understanding. Um, the um, So I don't know if you had a chance, I have it pulled up on my phone because my computer's being wonky, but there is from last, <clears throat> she's provided a pretty detailed line item summary for both projects. Um, and so I think um, you know, of course, in that there are some um, professional design, so it's not just, you know, pure expense. So there will be some, I'll say, <clears throat> salary type expenses, uh, but it is broken out pretty clearly how much she thinks each item will cost. And she already has received a couple of additional 
um, donations for various um, tangible goods. So I think that that it would make sense to do some sort of reimbursement based on expenses submitted. Although I know that will probably get, hopefully she can kind of bulk bulk it so we're not doing like <laughs> 50 line items. <laughs> but I, yeah. I have a question and I'm probably off, but is there a way to do it like a contract with her where we do a front paycheck for all of it and then she turns in the receipts afterwards to show the expenses and reimburse us if she doesn't spend it all? I don't know if that has been done. Has in, is that anything? No. Yeah. Anything, Christina, that you are familiar with with other commissions in, in that arrangement? Probably cleaner to have the reimbursement after the project is complete, like we're doing with the Swedish horses. Once the horse comes to the library, we then cut the check. Yeah. So that way we know the project is complete. So I would recommend I know that's going to be upfront cost for her and that's kind of what she's looking for, but knowing she's going to get reimbursed once she completes the project. I think that's a cleaner way to do it versus her reimbursing the city or the CAC after the fact if she doesn't use it all. Yeah, okay. plus I feel like some of these when I just look at there are like per unit costs, which she did a really good job of breaking this down, but all of it will probably <laughs> utilize at the same time. So I would imagine that there's going to be kind of a it'll be chunked out. But I would make a motion that we uh, expense the sixteen fifty out of the event support for this project. Thank you. Second. I'll second it. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Do you want me to keep this budget up? Are we talking more money? Or? No, I think that's that's the end of the budget talk tonight. Thank you. Okay. I will, though, David, be sending um, you uh, one additional line item for Swedish horses, um, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Okay, next up, the um, art project proposal. So um, I last, at, right after last meeting, I dropped in the share drive my kind of initial thoughts on an art project kind of proposal form so that we had a more formal way of um, requesting uh, projects and funds from, from this commission and also so that we could add a little bit of transparency and really just get everybody on the same page, all of the, the, the parties that would be involved. So the city, you know, Tim, us, whether their schools are involved so that we have a little bit cleaner path to getting projects approved. Um, so I dropped that in there. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that or if they've had, if anybody's had a chance to look at it yet. Um, if not, has anybody had a chance to look at it? I'll stop there. You did, David. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thoughts? Did you, did you anticipate this being a, um, an online form that so, yeah oh. no that was where i was going to go i my it was really just kind of a high level overview you know summary of kind of what i was thinking but yes ideally more of an online format and um that would be accessible to the public is that what you're going to ask yeah just how how it might be i i think that's a great idea i mean i think if you were to have that um, either on our cultural arts um, page that um, says, you know, when submitting or however the language they want to use to when submitting a project. And then I, I would guess that once that's submitted through that form, um, that the, whatever the online form, it would go to, I'm guessing you, Debbie, Mark, Christina, whoever wanted it, and then you would be able to bring it up in a in that manner um, to the rest of the commission that makes a lot of sense to me yeah and it's mostly utilized for times when there's not a quicker easier way to apply so if we had a, a quick application process where the project is established we know what we need that's a quick you know even crosswalks for example um, then 
then that's then, then we would default to, to those particular applications. But this is really just for um, you know public driven recommendations. But my suggestion was going to be, and I don't know quite yet who to work with the city. Um, maybe maybe Vanessa, but um, but to get it in that format, that online format, and then redistribute it to to the CAC so that we can kind of take a look at it and look and the look and feel of it to make sure it's user friendly. Um, and then from you know some maybe if there's like a beta environment or something that we can utilize, and then we can just when we feel comfortable with it and all of the uh, the pertinent you know make sure that Tim has seen it and. This, this, you know, everybody in the city has seen it, um, Emily. And so if we feel comfortable with it, then we can roll it out. My, my only comment would be as well is, um, is to give us some, uh, I like the idea of putting that out, but to give us some leeway, I think what we've, we learned from the cultural or the creative crosswalks and others form is as people begin to fill those out, we might need to make changes we may need to, you know, ask for more information or whatever that would be. But I love, yeah. I like the idea of at least having the start of that. And then as it comes to us, you know, maybe as a commission, we say, oh, shoot, we should have had this, you know, we should have asked for this too, because we're yeah. always asking somebody and then that could be added along as well. So yeah, I totally. Like I, I agree. Yep. And hopefully having it in a digital format will make that a lot easier to, to modify. This is this is Julie. I have a couple of questions about it. Yeah. Um, I apologize. I'm off video tonight. I'm recovering from a surgery. <laughs> um, but so anyway, um, I, my first question about the proposal form was when you're asking about the life cycle. Does that question um, refer to like the intended lifespan of the artwork? Yes. Okay. Perfect. And the second question was if if this then becomes a digital document and people are completing the application on online platform, who who fields those applications when they come in? Where, where do they go? Yeah, I think that I, to David, your point um, is we'll have to figure out who from the city. Um, so right now, I think, I don't know if we have, a, I don't, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to figure out who, maybe there's a small group. Um, even so that there's multiple eyes on it, but that'll have to be determined at some point where it's going to go. What, like with Swedish horses, um, they were able to like, you know, just pull it in e easily to the communications team, I believe. So I imagine they can, we can figure out a central mailbox or assign a couple of people to it. It's, it's easy to assign, you know, a couple of people. You could do like Mark and myself or and then we can always forward it out to wherever, wherever we need to. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Good thanks. Question. Thanks, Julie. Anything else on this? What is what would the next steps be, Reese? Um, the next steps are that I need to figure out who at the um, city I can bug to help me put this into a digital format and just get it um, formatted in a way that um, can be distributed to you to you all to take a look. Reese, you can work with David. Mark and I. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, um, yeah, we'll work with communications. Lucia is kind of our web person. So if we could put in a web form consistent with the city's CMS, so it looks very official. Um, for ease at the library, we often use just Google Forms, but I think for something like this, we'll, we'll, we'll do something like the proper CMS. Perfect. Okay, any other questions, comments? No? Alrighty. This has been like a topic that's come up in the last couple of meetings, the Englewood Municipal Code. We've talked about developing that. Um, first, is anyone clamoring to, to, take, to take this on? Uh, I'm interested in helping. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Martin. Yeah. Um, so I feel like um, once the Swedish horses have kind of come back to the stable and we're kind of made a little bit more inroads there, I can certainly help with that. Um, and in the meantime, I can, you know, I think if we maybe just 
take the next month or so and look at other cities and how their municipal codes are structured, maybe we can start um, forming some ideas um, just like in a small, small group, uh, because I don't think that discussing municipal code in its entirety in this particular forum is um, going to be <laughs> a good use of our time. Um, so we can maybe chunk it out a little bit. If that works for you. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Okay, and then uh, in-person meetings. So tonight we were thinking about meeting um, in a hybrid scenario, but council would like to do that first um, on the 7th, is that right? Yeah. Um, so the only thing I guess I would add to this is I'm gonna just wait for their lead to see what they do. And then maybe we can kind of <clears throat> fall in lockstep with, um, with their plans. So, I don't have anything else on that. Uh, I think it's just kind of a wait and see what they plan on doing. Any um, opposition to that? So if they decide to return to full in-person meetings and that's the expectation of the board, then would that be something that everybody would feel comfortable with doing next month? Yes. Okay. Sure. All right. So we'll just wait to hear what they do on that. Okay, next, initiatives, uh, bike racks, Martin. Yeah, and I also have a note. I, I Maybe I forgot to send the email. I had intended to talk about pop-up pop concerts tonight. Too. Oh yeah, you wanna start uh, with that? Yes, that's fine. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, I sent Debbie kind of the schedule that I worked out um, I didn't actually compare this to the city calendar now that I think about it, but this is basically what we, I kind of compared it to what we've done in the past. We didn't do it last summer, of course. Um, I scheduled only one for June just because, uh, well, we had talked about ha doing a pop-up concert for that event um, at the Mally, Mally Center. Yeah, the Mally Center right? in June 18th. Uh, which I don't mind. I don't really, we had talked about mo moving these pop-up concerts to support events like that. And I don't think that's appropriate for the intention of this project, though I don't necessarily mind if we change the scope of this and just kind of use these things to, to do it. But we had intended these things to just kind of be stuff that happens in the community. We have a separate budget for event support. And in my mind, stuff like that should probably come out of that separate budget, unless we want to change this pop-up concert initiative. That, that's oh, just what I, I, agree just what I think. Um, so uh, just talking about kind of what we've done in the past, the two places that have really worked for these pop-up concerts are the River Run Park and the Englewood Station. And we've tried it in various other spots and it just has never, has never really worked in any of the other spots. We tried at the Paseo um, and around it at a, some other spots. Um, so I just kind of decided that those were going to be the two places that we would do um, these. Uh, the River Run Park, we meet at the picnic shelter. They're kind of right on the east side of the river. And uh, that's always been pretty successful. People will sit and listen. Uh, and so I asked Neil Haverstick, who's a uh, musician here in Englewood. He lives here in Englewood, and he plays like microtonal music. He plays everything, but he's pretty interesting uh, musician and a pretty interesting guy. He was enthusiastic about it. Uh, we usually pay seventy-five dollars an hour per musician, so a hundred and fifty bucks per musician essentially, because uh, we have him play for two hours. Um, and he's available for June 26th, and I'm available for June 26th, so I can help him get set up. Um, and that's the only one I have booked. Don't have anything for July yet, but I think we'll meet before the next one happens. Is that true? When's our next meeting? Because the July is always weird. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, Sorry. The 7th. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Are, and I think... Are we actually yeah. meeting on the 7th? Yeah, I think okay. so. All right. Sometimes, um, sometimes I know we delay a week because of 4th of July, but. Do we? Do we want to do that? Uh, I would prefer not uh -oh. to. But, uh, <laughs> you would like to? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Meeting on the 7th is fine. I just know that, that in the past that has happened. I so think because I... It, the 4th ended was so close to the date, yeah. Greece, that we 
we have moved it, but I think because this one is, you know, we've got three or four, fourth this year is on a weekend. So I think yeah. it'll be fine. All right, cool. I just wanted to make sure. So um, th the only thing that I, we would need to do tonight regarding this would be approving this one concert and approving the schedule, uh, but we don't have to approve the schedule just yet. Uh, Let's um, remind me, um, do we have an obligation also for Sounds of Summer? No. Nope. So then if Sounds of Summer continue, the Sounds of Summer are 22nd, 29th, August 5th, and August 12th. I think Tony's on here. Um, okay. So we would have a conflict with August 5th. Yeah, so we won't, so we'll change that one. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that was just kind of around the time. Sorry, yeah. I knew that too. I shouldn't have put a Thursday. Uh, okay, we'll move that one. Okay. Maybe. Um, yeah. And then um, do we feel good about the 22nd or the 23rd since Sounds of Summer is scheduled for the 22nd? Back to back. Music well, the, we don't promote these, so it won't take, it won't take any crowd. It just is music that pops up. So okay, well then, There's I no, think that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna like take any promotion or anything like that. It's just all of a sudden there's music there. That's cool. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I also don't care if we move it. So I don't think it would would conflict. Because are you thinking, Martin? You would put it up on the upstairs there. Yeah, in kind the of where station. We, yeah, that's been as, the place that worked the best. As the commuters get off the train, then are there commuters on the train anymore? Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I actually don't know now that you yeah. say that. Are people taking the train? We are see, seeing people take the train. Probably uh, not as many as prior to COVID, but there are people using it. Using the train. Are there enough to make a, mu a musician feel welcome and loved? From the hours of four to six, they don't. They they don't care. They just uh, <laughs> they're happy to get paid to play. <laughs> I think in in the past it has been it it was interesting because you know as the waves of the trains would come by there would be enough people, and they were always they were always fascinated by you know here we are walking down the the pathway from the station and there was just some musicians playing and so yeah. you would get some people stay and stuff so it's always been a unique kind of fun little thing i agree but i just didn't know too yeah that's you know, a good question though Are and i i, I think i'll i think i'll change these dates because one of the things that is really supportive for musicians would be to put these on dates that they wouldn't otherwise normally have gigs so uh, that would be super helpful so for instance like the 23rd which is a friday that's they might ha potentially have another gig so what if we it, so we can avoid the conflict on the 22nd what if we move that to earlier in the week like the 19th yeah. or the 20th because those are off gig nights would yeah. that be that be okay okay and i don't know why i put those two so oh because that one's in the park uh and that's on a sunday so let's leave the the 725 the same but the one that's on 723 let's move to 720 20. yeah Okay, I like that. And then uh, the one at the 11th is fine. And then the one that I put on the 5th, I don't know what I was, what I was thinking. Uh, let's do that either on the 3rd or the 10th. And I don't have a preference. I don't have an opinion. <laughs> okay, let's do it August 3rd. Perfect. I'm going to go see Wilco on the 10th. Okay. That means I can swing by. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Um, will you update those dates and send them to Debbie so we just yeah I'll update the schedule yeah and send um, it. But I think for now we need to uh, do a motion to approve the three hundred dollar fee and then um, probably a separate motion to approve the schedule. Uh, yeah, let's just approve the schedule for June. I would say because okay. it's not written um, yet. <laughs> well then. In that case, let's go ahead and just approve the schedule and the three hundred dollar fee for June. So I moved. Approve both the schedule and the three hundred dollar fee. Second. For the pop up concerts. Yeah. 
And I think you got a second from Mark. Okay, sorry, I'm just, David, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Or maybe I'm just having a hard time hearing everyone. So is that, was that Mark that seconded? Yeah. Thanks. So David, you did the first, Mark, you did the second. Correct. That's correct. Okay. okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. And then do you wanna go ahead and move forward on the uh, July and August dates as we just discussed, Martin? Uh, yes, we can. We can though it might be confusing to explain. It might just be better for me to update the document since we're meeting before any yeah, of those would yeah. happen. No, that works. Let's just meet next week. Okay. And then my update on the bike racks, uh, I, sent out, I sent out inquiries to uh, three places, two of which responded, but have not sent me the estimate yet. I don't know why. Um, so I checked in with them again this week. Maybe they haven't got it done. Um, so, Christina, you mentioned call mile high powder coating and they did not answer and their voicemail was full. So I don't know what's going okay. on with that them. That came actually from the Inglewood Police Department. They recommended them for powder okay. coating. So Well, I will call them again. I'll see if I can get a hold of them. But yeah, you don't that, you don't have to go with them necessarily. It was just a recommendation. So. And then the other powder coating place that I found that was in Englewood is Rocky Mountain powder coating. And uh, she responded, um, but did not, she said she would send me an estimate for powder coating and for painting so that we could see the difference, but then did not send me the estimate. She said she'd send it to me the next day and it never came in. And then um, Andy Miller from Art, from AMP, uh, who put together the estimate for us, he also said he would send me an estimate, but he did not. <laughs> but I, uh, Debbie said that he was, he's been dealing with an injury, but I, he sounds like he's getting better. So I don't have any, that's as far as I got this month, uh, trying to follow up with them, but, uh, so I don't know yet. All right. I'll push him. We have, um, some stuff going on with Swedish forces too and see if he's what he's okay. got. Yeah. And maybe he's concentrating on that, but yeah, uh, I told him that we need the estimate so that we can submit it. Christina, do I send those to you then? And then, or do we send them to council or? No, you can share them with me and we'll determine next steps depending okay. on what they come in at. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, the Swedish Horse Project. So, um, Swedish horses are returning. Um, Mark, how many Swedish horses do we have back? So, I've got six so far out of 11 because one of those is the one that Mark brought back for uh, from the former mayor. Um, so we're expecting them all back by Friday. Um, so I think they're going to be coming in hot. Um, if I don't hear, if we haven't gotten them back Friday, I'll follow up individually with the artists and get a status update. Okay, great. So I was able to touch base with Andy and then I sent kind of a lengthy email last week, um, to Mark, Christina, um, Tony, we've got, um, the horses hopefully going back to AMPA for their final coding. I'm getting my calendar on the 14th, if the if the city can manage that. Um, and then um, that'll take a couple of weeks. And Andy's actually going out of town so the horses can sit in the shop undisturbed. So that'll be good because when he returns, he's planning installation of the horses the week of the 19th. So um, he feels pretty confident about uh, being able to knock those out pretty quickly. And then we discussed in our last meeting having the artist um, reception and celebration on July 30th. And so uh, we touched base um, with Tony last week and uh, I sent over the budget for both um, the printing and the events. So we kind of know what the framework is that we're working within, but uh, we will send invitations out to everyone, artists, council, CAC, um, and others so that they can put July 30th on their calendar. We're working on a location. Um, there is a chance that, you know, we could have a fairly decent turnout, probably the biggest social event that I've attended in a year. Um, so I'm uh, just trying to find something in downtown Inglewood that can accommodate everyone. 
Um, and um, so also Vanessa and staff at the city is we're working on an, a really neat uh, kind of a communication push that'll be digital and then have kind of a print um, map of the horses and also incorporate some of the businesses that are around them, uh, which I think will be really nice so that if people want to walk the route, they can. If they don't want to drive it, they can. Um, and then everything will culminate the night of the 30th. So if you haven't marked your calendars, please do that. Um, and then um, the only thing is that um, we have one location, Christina, I don't know if you've even seen my email yet, but Brookdale needs something in writing about the location. So once that is sent over, I just, they're the last ones that just have to sign off on the location and then we should be good. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we, everything's kind of rolling. Um, questions, comments, anything that I miss? Reese, are you, are you intending to have, uh, or is a group intending to have the party inside? Or could, could the party, I heard, I think I heard you say that you were trying to find a space. Could the party in essence take place in, at the city center around okay. the fountain and such? Good. Yep. And keep it outside and allow, I mean, because that becomes part of the starting could be a, you know, depending on how you yep. look at it. It's a starting yep. point to walking and you could surely have people start there and then walk the path. Well, I think the thought was that because it's in July, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of interest in a mile and a half walk in the heat of the afternoon um, and evening. And maybe, okay. you know, that's kind of a do it on your own if you want, but meet back someplace, indoor, outdoor, we haven't really decided yet, but, okay. um, and if anybody has any specific, like that's a good suggestion, um, please let us know. But yeah, and then just, you know, everybody get together and meet at like 6 p.m. on the 30th. I, I really like David's suggestion just because I think being outdoors would accommodate more people and the different feelings people have right now, still in the pandemic, they're really varying. And so I want to think about being inclusive and I feel like an outdoor space might allow that a little yeah, bit more. Likely, right now than yeah, likely there will have to be an indoor outdoor option anyway, just because of space. So I think that that's, yeah, definitely something to consider. My other question is, oh, oh sorry. No, oh, go no, ahead. no, go. Oh, go I was ahead. just going to say, too, if we did do it in the city center, are we allowed to have wine or do we have to take out special permits for that? Like, I'm just assuming it's going to be like an appetizer wine type thing. And if that's the case, is that allowed in city center? I guess that would be the other question. But it seems like that would be a nice outdoor space. We would have to get a permit to have alcohol. Um, so it, it might be a little bit more paperwork. In fact, I think timing wise, we may not have enough time to have an event in July and get a permit uh, for alcohol. So that was kind of the thought when Reese and uh, the group met was if we could find a location that people could have a cocktail and some appetizers or whatever, um, that that could be an option. If we did it here at city center, we could all be, always have food. It's just the alcohol may not be able to happen. Okay. We could also do it at the Paseo and just have a, a meeting point and then everybody could go to the various places around there. Um, sure. I, then we don't have to worry about any of that and we can kind yeah. of support our downtown um, and just, you know, set up our table or whatever we would want to do. Yeah, we're hoping to have some nice photography of the horses displayed for each artist. So um, that, you know, and it's something that we can redisplay at the block party even, um, which is kind of cool. And we, they're not that expensive. And I think it'd be a really nice uh, memorialization of, of each artist's work. So um, yeah, there's lots of options and uh, that's on our immediate to-do list. Mm -hmm. And this is Julie. And I just, I mean, I just had a thought as you were describing that whether it's the city center park or um, or the Paseo or wherever the, the gathering is, um, 
would there be any option of like doing a shuttle to the beginning, you know, like to the other end so that to encourage mm -hmm. people to gather and then take the shuttle, walk back and then walk back to the, to the point. I don't know if that would be problematic, but um, I just had that idea. A really good idea. And Reese, what time are you thinking of doing this? I guess I was thinking evening, like six or seven. Are you thinking earlier than that? Like more like four? Uh, no, we were thinking six-ish. Okay. To work. I think it's a Friday, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So it'll be a little bit. Yeah, a shuttle would be cool, but it might be cool enough to walk that late in the evening, you know? Mm hmm But a shuttle would be kind of interesting, too, though, from a mobility perspective. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you guys have given us a lot to think about. Thank you. Um, okay, that's all I had. I, I have something else that we yeah, Martin. we glossed over that uh, we need to talk about the music at the Mally Center on July on June 18th. Yes. Sorry. I... That's right. So is that still Tony is um, the Mally welcome back still happening on June 18th? Yes, to the best of my knowledge. Yes. Okay. And I'm guessing that that was that was the event we were trying to talk about. Um, um, when will that be firmed up, do we think, so we can sc schedule music if it's still needed? So the contact for that is actually going to be um, Cheryl Adamson over at the Mellie Center. And um, we did have a team meeting today, and I think that she may have secured some mu some music, but I am fortunately, sorry, I'm not 100% on that, but Cheryl would be your best contact. And she, her email would be just like myself and Christina's at the um, Adamson at inglewoodco.gov. Okay. Martin, do you want to email her or do you want me? Uh, I can email her, but if we want to pay musicians, we need to vote on paying, paying them today. And then yeah, if they're un, if they're not needed, I guess we just keep it. But um, C Adamson at Englewood.gov. Yeah, Englewood CO. Okay, and I don't, I don't, I, I don't even know the details of the event to know what, how many hours or details. I wonder if it's is it worth pursuing this late. Uh, I'm kind of more inclined to skip it and I'll offer these folks a one of the pop-up concerts. Okay, let's do that. I think that's fine. Okay. All right, that one's checked off. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, staff's choice. Anything from staff? So uh, I wanted... Tony. Um, I wanted to let everyone know there's been um, a change and I'm pretty sure that you, yeah, you guys received this 21, um, 2021 summer event schedule. And um, there has been a change in the Celebrate Inglewood date. It is now changed to August 28th and it's going to be held from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's going to be located at the Denny Miller Field in Inglewood Police Plaza area. So um, yes, update of date, time, and location. Um, so that's 828 Denny Miller Field, okay. And then- 10 to um, two. 10 to two, yeah. Okay. Uh, I will email Angela and let her know both about the this change in case she doesn't already know and then our um, approval for funds so that it's all in, in one. Awesome. And I did reach out to um, her as well. Oh, okay. And let her know because the steamroller and touch a truck was a part of that. And she's good. Um, I haven't heard back from her yet. Okay. 
And then um, one other possible date that we um, are looking at a kickoff to summer type of event. It's not on that list because it was very tentative until, um, and it still kind of is, but I won't talk to you all again for a month. Um, but looking at doing on July 17th of 2021, um, but more information will come on that as soon as we have everything secured. But after talking with Allison earlier today, um, she thought it might be good to just put that day out there for you all. Okay. Well, if you need music, my next meeting, we'll be able to make a, we'll be able to, if we, need, if we need to vote on anything, we'll be able to do that. Okay. Any questions for me about anything? Yeah, this looks great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, any other staff? I, I would just add to that. Um, uh, in July, on Tuesdays at 6.30 in the same city center uh, amphitheater, um, we're going to have the kid stage performers back. Um, and that, uh, so Tuesday, July 6th, there's the Slide of Circus. And then July 13th, the Kamala Polynesian Dancers. Then we have so then the 20, 20th and the 27th again. Uh, it's no registration required. That's, that's really, it's more of a family oriented thing. Like it's, it's kid stage. Um, I just wanted to mention that that's happening this summer as well. At, at what time? 6.30 p.m. Okay, I'll move the pop-up concerts so they're not on Tuesday. Oh, that's good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even think about that, thank you. That's fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, we, got, we need like one giant calendar here. Yeah. Awesome, those sound fun. Yeah, yeah those are cool. Yeah. And then I'll just add two things, just to update. So the medians we talked about earlier, a couple months ago, um, that we're doing some landscape design in, it's in process. I don't think we'll need any art uh, probably till later this fall, winter, next year. So I'll keep you all updated as that project moves on. But uh, there's some permitting that we have to do through CDOT that could take months. So um, just hold, don't hold your breath for that one. Just hold on. I'll keep you updated as we know more. And then also the mus mushroom restoration at Romans Park is in progress. Park staff has confirmed they will paint the mushrooms back to the brown. But this could be a fall project for the Englewood schools if there's interest there to do a couple of the mushrooms. Um, with art of some sort. So just, Emily, keep that in mind for the future. We can discuss later kind of thoughts on that. If we need to go out for another artist, we can, but I think it'd be fun to have the kids work on a project for that. They've been very creative in all the projects they've done so far for us. So there's some opportunity there as well. So that's all I have. Awesome, thank you. Um, I don't have anything else. In fact, my only thing was to ask about the mushrooms. So um, that's all on my end. Anybody else from the CAC have any um, items they'd like to discuss in the last few minutes? Nothing, awesome, might, well. Can I just real quick on that? Um, I might've missed that from the last meeting. So the, the mushroom uh, as, the mushrooms as, as using artists we're, we're moving on beyond that and we're just going to maybe use student artists. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's what we discussed possibly doing. I think it's still open ended if we want to go with a professional artist or if we want to use students. We talked about only doing maybe a couple of the mushrooms, not all of them, since some people seem to like the brown mushrooms out there. Um, so there's opportunity to do something. The, the restoration process is going very well. The ones they finished look great. I know there was some concern on the structural integrity of the mushroom and they have been inspected and the, the actual structures are great. It's just the concrete chunks fell off over time. So that's that's all being repaired now. Great. Thank Could you. be a good opportunity to activate that neighborhood too, maybe. So, um, okay, anything else? Nothing for me. All right, shall we adjourn? Thanks everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.